Hey everybody, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Welcome back, and here we are now with part five of the build of this beautiful little kit. And this is the Meng Chieftain Mark 10. And how lovely kit it is, TS051, it is beautiful. And I'm doing this with a Brack Rifle Model Works group build, Elizabethan group build, which I'll put a logo up for now. You can go and find that over on, um, on Facebook in the Black Rifle Model Works community, or indeed you can find the Black Rifle Model Works channel on YouTube. So there you go. So, as I say, this is a group build for them. So, um, part five now, just to put you in reality, in real time, rather than Nigel's model bench time, today is the 12th of July, 2023. So this video is going out a few days after it's actually been filmed. I'd like to try and get ahead. And then if I get a slot, you know, where I don't want to work on it or something, then I can catch up. So you don't get a big gap in the video, like a four year gap on the Hellcat. So uh, you can see I've got a array of parts here and in the instructions here, they're telling us to go on and fit these mesh grills, which is very weird before you even fit the hull. So we've got the mesh grills there all marked out. And what I've done, uh, cut the plastic off the back and I've sprayed the back of them in a, a thin coat, a very thin coat of um, black primer. And you can see it's getting scratched off already, but that's fine. I didn't put any um, etch primer on there. I want that piece of plastic to come out of there and it's not going to. Um, I didn't want to put any etch primer on there because basically you've got to remember when you glue this down, that will not come out of there. When you glue this down, um, you need to be gluing to the metal. So I'm going to be removing paint so that the, the, the adhesive I use actually glues the metal. Otherwise, if you just glue it like this, you are basically gluing the paint to the model and depending on the adhesion of the paint to the to the brass for holding it down. So be very, very careful with that. And also when you spray this, if this is your airbrush, spray in from four different angles like this because you, you need to get the sides of the mesh. You can actually see it. If you've got some yourself, if you hold it like, if you spray it here, okay, and then you look at it like that, you will see black. If you turn it over, it will be bare brass. You need to make sure, because what we want to do is make sure there's no brass showing anywhere. Um, and at the end of this, this is all going to get painted brown this rear deck anyway. So as you can see, I've painted all this again, make sure you come in from all the angles, get everything all, all done. Otherwise you'll see grey bits of plastic in there, which you don't want. Um, so that's those, they're ready to go on. And as you know, in, the, in part four, we built up the toolboxes. I've done the seams and then painted the backs black again, because basically when they go on, we're not going to be able to get in there with any paint. I've now realised that looking at references that the the toolboxes are actually the back end of them are white or the, the white color um, but the inside it looks like they're brown so I'm not going to be able to get in and paint it very easily so I'm going to paint these off and then glue them on the model after they're painted in the Berlin camo scheme or at least the first bit you can see in my wonderful reference book that Phil sent me you can see on the front there we have the gray box in there um, and we can see in these lovely photos in here, here you go. We've got the brown going on the box there in the back. This one here is just grey and white. And this one here is brown, white and grey. But it's going to be easy to sort of tack it in place, mask it up and do the brown. But um, I think the backside inf interfaces of them are brown. I need to check my references. They may actually even be grey looking like that. But um, I've also got here, I've got the, the driver's, um, driver's viewport here which is not blue, it's black by the look of it. Um, it's probably just black glass because there's no light behind it. So what I've done, I've got a piece of masking tape there, that's two by 6.6 .6 mil, so I'm masking that off. And then looking again at this book, we can see here, there's the, there's the site there. Okay, and it looks like you've got a black frame around there. So what I'm gonna do is glue it in, paint it all black, then I've got another piece of masking, cover that up before we spray any white. So, um, because it looks like that frame on there is black. And then I'm going to have to spray the inside of this. This is a guard that actually goes on like so. This goes over the top like that. So I'm going to have to spray the inside of that, the white colour, before I glue it on. So uh, this is where we need to be, you know, thinking about our masking and where our paint's going. Because, you know, getting that painted in behind there when this is all black it's going to be nigh on impossible but then saying that the plastic's about the right color so we may get away with it who knows but i certainly don't want to be spraying black in there so um 
I guess we can go on and get that done now. We can get this glued in and we'll just check the fit first. Just check it fits all right. And there's me putting it in backwards. Gently grab it with some tweezers so as not to damage the tape. And that fits in there absolutely fine. So we'll get a drop of extra thin. We'll just put a drop here. We don't want to go flooding it. Because we don't want to get up underneath that masking tape. There we go. So that's glued in now. And then we'll, do is we'll spray all that black around there and then we'll mask it off. I've got another piece of masking tape cut to fold to go over it and then that will stay black. Um, the lens will stay gloss, the rest of it will be flat black. So, and then inside here we'll spray the white colour. So moving back to the exhaust here, oh, I've got the barrel halves off as well. Remember I should have done that first of all, you should always do these things early on. So we'll get the barrel halves joined together and, um, and then that can be drying for a few days. So when we come to work on the scene, it's all solid. But the fit of that going together is beautiful. But as you can see, there is some movement there. So be very careful to make sure you get all these belts lined up. If you don't, it's going to be a nightmare. Again, getting all this lined up here, you can just perhaps grab it with a pair of tweezers, whatever. But um, yeah, we need to make sure it's all beautifully lined up. So I'll probably do that off camera with a magnifier so I really make sure. It's, um, it's very weird, the weather at the moment. It's, it's causing my eyes to water a lot. It's almost like um, like a hay fever type thing. So I'm going to glue this box onto here. We can see when we look forward in the instructions, uh, this is the exhaust muffler silencer. We've got these bits. Now, I'm not obviously not going to put the track links on. But I'm going to put these brackets on. This part here, D34 and C19. And this top part here, D10, which I've painted the inside of black. Um... And then that's the finished assembly going on. Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to spray this off the model and then fit it after. So I'll go on and get these parts on. So this part here is going to go on like so. As you can see, I've sprayed it black already in the back. Put a drop of extra thin on each pin. And that will get the pillar around underneath then. And it'll melt the paint away. And all will be good. There we go. So that's in there. And we've got this tiny little part here. This is C, C19. And that's going to go into there. Like that. And it doesn't want to stay in there. So what I'm going to have to do is put a drop of... Which way does it go? It does go that way up. We'll just put a tiny drop of cement on there. Just enough to hold it in. Make sure it's all nice and square. And then we can put a drop of cement in the back and that will really capillary under it and get it held in. So that's nice and square. And we've got this part here, which is D34, and this is like a hanger. This is like a little hanger for that bit there, C16. And that's for the, um, it's for the barrel lock. So the barrel lock's just going to hang down. It's not glued. It's designed to be clipped in place. I'm not going to fit it yet because it's got to be sprayed brown along with the camo. But it's obviously going to be very difficult to mask over that. It'd be easier just to fit it afterwards because it just clips on. Now, while we're on the subject of the brown camo, I want to say a massive thank you again to Mark. If you remember, it was just the other day for me, but... Be a while back for you because you're seeing this in the future. I did a video and I showed you those beautiful antenna that uh, Mark sent me. These are the Klansman antenna and bases from um, Scorpion Miniature Models. So I did a review of those. Go back and have a look. It's, it was called uh, a Prezi from Mark. The video, absolutely gorgeous little aftermarket set. But he's now also sent me another package and he sent me this. This is brown clay, MC249. It's an AK product. And he said, see how you get on with it. I mean, I've never got on well with AK paints. These in the bottle. I love the, um, the AK real colours. These here. Come here. These spray absolutely wonderfully. They're wonderful paint. They're just like Tammy or Mr. Hobby. But I've never got on very well with these. So he's also sent me a pot of AK thinner. So we'll see how we get on with that. Um, if, if I can't get on with it, I'm going to have to try and colour match it using something else. But um, 
yeah, MIG Ammo and AK, I can never get on with them. Just don't like using them. And people say, you can do this, you can do this, you can do that. And I always think, well, why bother? If you get on really, really well with a brand of paint, why go through a load of hassle to make yourself use something different? It just seems a bit strange. Um, so there we are. Unless, of course, you've got issues, pets, children around the house, and you have to move away from solvents. And that's, that's a very good reason to change. But I think wherever you're spraying, it's not it's not great to have it in the air around uh, around children or and it, or indeed adults or pets or anything. So that's the hook for the track glued on, and it fits in there like a prick in a top hat. So you need to make sure that's nice and square. Um, just wondering how I can make sure that's square, just by eye really. Put that next, that one next to it, just like so. There we go. They're nice and square so that's that done and then this piece here I've removed the paint from the top edge this is just going to glue down on there so what we can do is fit that in there and then put some glue on those pins at the back and I'm also going to run something along this seam here because that's going to be up against the tank so that's fitted like that and there we go so now you can see why I wanted to make sure I sprayed inside there black first so we don't get any white bits. Okay, so I'm going to just have a play with these things again because, as I say, they fit like a prick in the top part. I want to make sure they're nice and square. Have I, have I got anything small enough here? So I can use the end of that rule just to square that up like that. If you're building one of these, fit that last because that gets in the way. You've got all the room then to get on with these and make sure it's all nice and square. And then we'll hang a couple of track links on there after it's all painted. And we can rust them up a bit. So now moving on to the photo etch. And this will be great for the newer modellers out there. I'll show you how to remove your photo etch. Now, quite often I would leave the plastic on one side and peel the part up. But with these meshes, maybe it's pouring now, with these meshes it's often a better idea to remove the plastic first. So we're just going to cut the plastic sheet, just like so, and then pick up the corner. And lift it off, just like so. And you can see there's a lovely image there of the, the grill with the black paint on. So, and that piece of plastic is still in there go away there we go right so that goes in the bin and we basically go around remove the plastic from all the from all the grills that we've painted all right so that's that and then these two here And come out and then it's that little one there on the end of the 11 there we're going to get that one too so we've removed all the plastic now and the reason I've done that as I say you can see it's quite adhesive if you um, leave the plastic on there and you peel the grills away from them, you're going to curl them up and possibly pull them out of shape. So for cutting out photo etch, uh, for the newer models out there, you always need something hard. You can use an, a, a tile, um, like a wall tile or whatever. It needs to be something hard. Otherwise, if you use something soft, I'll show you here. If you use something soft like a cutting mat, when you push the blade in, as you can see, it bends the brass. You can see there the brass is bent. If you use something hard, it won't bend it. So 
which grills are we putting on first? We've got these outer ones here, which is W3 and W2. So here we have three and two. So I'll cut off two. So what we do, I use a round blade rather than a sharp point, and that way we can um, use different areas of the blade. If you use a sharp point, you're always cutting on the same point. This blade is actually quite blunt and it's not cutting it at all. Yeah, I need to get a new blade in here or sharpen this one. There we go. So that's come off now. OK. And now what I'm going to do, you can use a file. But I tend to use a sanding stick. I've got a 600 grit here. And just very gently along the edge sand away the, the nibs that are left over. Oh, one other thing, before you do any painting, sand over the brass just to rough up the surface. It helps to key it. And what I'll probably do with these is get them fitted and then I'll give them a coat of um, etch primer just to help a little bit and then we'll prime them with a the black paint. Okay, so I can feel that now. It feels nice and smooth. So what I'm going to do now is just test fit this. This was number two, wasn't it? So this is going to go on this side with the slots facing in. So this one's going to go like that. OK, so it's going to fit in there like that, I'm guessing doesn't have any positive location. Yes, it does. It has, there is a little tiny nest cut in there, I think. And also, as you can see, it's bowed. I'm just going to sand away a little bit of the end to see if it will fit down into that recess. Sorry, those slots face inwards, don't they? Not outwards. Okay, so that's how it's going to go. Right, so what we're going to do is remove some paint from the edges. And at the same time, we're also roughing it up, which will help the glue to stick as well. Okay, so that's that there. As you can see, we've still got the black paint on all the edges. That's what we're trying to achieve when we sprayed it in the back. We can also see it has a curve to it. See on there, it has a curve to it. So what I'm going to do is put it on. This is a sponge. This is a very hard sponge. So I'm going to put it on here. And then with something large diameter, I'm just going to very gently roll it. And that should straighten it out it's a bit better don't push as it'll just curl up the other way so just very gently rolling it to get it flattened out you can tweak it with your fingers like this but you run the risk of going too far and actually bending it rather than tweaking it so there we go that's that's pretty flat now yeah Put it down on a flat surface, tap the corners, so we can grab our tank hull, put that in position, and we can see that that is going to fit in there. Absolutely gorgeous. And that's how that's going to fit in there. Now, I'm not going to glue it now, I'm going to glue them all at once. If I get the glue out now, it's quite a warm day, if I get glue in, the, in, the, in my little dispenser now, I use a little... Pringles lid for putting super glue in and I've got my little looper here remember I showed you that before for applying it I might use a knife blade in this occasion um, and, uh, and then we'll get them all glued in together if I if I put one drop out now and start using it by the time I get to all of the over here the glue will have dried up and it becomes thicker so it's not so usable so we'll just do it all at once so I'm going to go on and get the rest of these grills off cleaned up and ready to go and then you can come back and I'll show you how I glue them in. Okay, so I've got them all cut out, all flattened, and all the edges removed. And I've also, on the back, removed 
the paint from the edges so we get you know the plastic gluing to the uh, brass rather than to the paint I've also scraped away a little bit of paint around here not too worried about that because this this is the um like an idiot I've put it away again uh, this is super glue from a company called VMS uh, black thin flexi 5k ca it's absolutely amazing you can get it from there and if they don't have any stock you can get it from scale model shop um but yeah absolutely brilliant wonderful stuff so i'm going to get these on here now now because the camera's on it's going to go completely wrong and it's going to be a right mess don't let it put you off give it a go um the beauty of this flexi 5k ca, 5K CA one, it's black, so you can see where it's going, even though the model's black, so, but it will remove the paint, so I will see where it is. Um, it sticks very, very well, but it dries quite slowly. So what we're going to do is put some glue on with, a, with a, a knife, put the mesh down. We'll be able to have plenty of time to position it, and then we're going to run over the edges with a cotton bud. Just like you do with Mr. Surfacer, it will remove any excess glue, and we should get a very neat, tidy joint. So, the first thing I have to do is look at this and see how you go this I've got that one there the wrong way around so that one's going to go like that right so we'll start with this side in fact no we won't we'll start with this side and work towards us so this panel is nice and flat all trimmed up all sorted I'm just gonna it has got a slight bend in it if you fit photo etch it's got a bend in it it will often just ping off one day so these are going in with the the slots facing inwards and it's pushed back for tweezers it's pushed back into this end whoops this is what I said you see as soon as the camera goes on it's all going to go completely tits up okay so it's basically pushed like that way okay in my opinion I think that's correct so I wish they'd given us in the instructions they tell you to put them in I wish they'd given us like a an aerial view of how they should be because um, we've got parts that have got to fit around them and there's little slots and stuff in there I think it's all going to be okay so um, we'll soon know if it's not easy enough to ping them off so I've got my um, super glue here in the in the Pringles lid and as you can see I've dragged it along to make it a sort of thinner longer layer so what I'm going to do, thinner, longer layer, that sounds like a European minister, doesn't it? Thinner, longer layer. Um, we've got a hair rod there, which we want to get rid of. It's still not gone. Goodbye. So we've got some, we've now got some glue on the edge of that knife, as you can see. Okay. So with the mesh held in place, I am just going to literally put this knife into that corner and let the glue capillary off. And then I'm going to wipe it with a cotton bud. Get the excess off. And then just leave that for a few seconds. And then again we can come on, get the knife in the glue. Okay, holding the mesh down, I'm going to put the blade into the corner. Just let the glue capillary under. This is why I wanted the glue to be thin because it won't capillary if it's thickened up. I'm just wiping away the excess there with a cotton bud. And as you can see there, it gives you a very, very neat joint. Somebody outside acting like an idiot. As you can see there, just roll in the glue off the blade. What I'm going to do here is sharpen the end of the cotton bud. And just push it into there. And there we are, that's glued down. Okay, we'll go along this edge as well. So that's how I'm doing it. It's basically, you get the glue on the knife and then imagine this is the part here just run it along the edge and it just deposits the glue into the edge and it'll capillary underneath that's why you want the thin glue okay so that's vmx vms flexi 5k ca black thin you can do it with any thin glue but the problem is if you use a normal thin super glue 
by the time you come back with a cotton bud it will dry and what you'll probably find is a load of fur stuck to your model because it'll stick to the cotton bud that's the beauty of this stuff okay so there we are right i'll carry on and get the rest done then i'll come back there we go guys all on as you can see it looks a little bit messy because the <clears throat> the um the uh, super glue, <laughs> I couldn't get the word, the super glue has actually removed the paint. Where it's, got, where it's got on the paint and you rub it away, it's removed the paint. It doesn't damage the plastic, it just takes away the paint. But um, they're on there nicely, all good. So, all clear, all good. So it's um, basically I need to give that now a quick prime. Uh, I also need to rough them up. So I'm going to grab a stick, grab a sponge. Uh, in fact, I won't grab a sponge, I'll grab a stick the 600 grit stick here again and just very gently just sort of rough up the surface it doesn't need to be like you know it doesn't need to be like like a, a gravel track it just needs to be roughed up it's also a good way if one of these flicks up we know that it's not glued down very well but um i think they're okay as i say this vms glue they actually say it take to fully harden it takes 24 hours but it does actually work pretty instantly. I mean, it works within a few seconds, but it's not like it's not like three seconds like the normal thin glues are. It's you know it's probably thirty seconds. But the fact that it's it's flexible is fantastic. It's just I'm never going to use another super glue. I've got all the VMS range here, or pretty much, which has been sent to me by Ed over at Premium Hobbies, and they're all really really good. So uh, yeah. So that's them roughed up. So I'm going to give them an etch prime now and I'm going to use, it's here, unprepared as usual. I'm going to use this one. This is Mr. Metal Primer. And this is good stuff. I thin it with um, with uh, rapid thinners and apparently it works better. That was what uh, James Moore said anyway over at Tavoli Go Model Works, Model Works. And I think he's correct. But uh, I, I haven't found an etch primer that really works very well at all. But um, I think this is probably the best. What I have found, if you if you are doing something that's going to be handled, not used, whatever, um, the best thing to do is af after you've got all your etch primers and all your paint down and everything, give it a clear coat, and the clear coat will kind of seal it in, almost like wrapping a plastic bag around it, and that will sort of make it a lot tougher. I think that's what I'm going to do with the guns on the Airfix Hellcat when I get around to them. The other thing I'm looking at now, we've got all these tiny little handles going on here. I'm not going to put them on yet, B19. In fact, I'm going around making reg marks where parts haven't gone on. So I'm not going to fit that yet and I'm not going to fit them yet because they'll get knocked off. Um, we'll put them on after we've done the fenders and everything, depending on the masking. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to spray the underneath of these black because they're, you can see here, they're little round, they're circular in section, little handles and whatever, little clasps. And I don't want to see this white plastic. So what I can do is prime this. First with the etch primer, give it a couple of coats, leave it for 20 minutes, half an hour, and then we'll paint it with the, um, the Mr. Finishing Surfacer Black. I'll also paint this around here and then get that other mask on there. And, um, and I'm also going to paint the inside of this black because obviously I'm thinking I'm going to spray it white. But obviously I need to get a black undercoat on it first, otherwise it's going to be like glaringly white and the rest will have like this, this black hue behind it. So um, I'll get that done and I'll be back. So that's going to be like an hour for me, but a couple of seconds for you. There we go, that's all painted black now. And as you can see, if you keep your paint nicely thinned and spray it very lightly, you can really get some beautiful detail in there. You know, and it doesn't sort of clog up or block anything off. It's just really, really nice. So, lovely, lovely model. I've also sprayed around there, around that vision block, so we can mask that up later. And uh, I've also done the part that goes over the top. So now I'm going to look at these handles, which are set about, or whatever they are, hinges, or whatever they are. Um, and you can see them on here. We've got 20, 21, and 31. So we've got four of those, eight of those, and two of those. And you can see when I turn them over, I painted them black. And that's exactly why. And what I've done here, I've sprayed this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle. Okay, so like 60 degrees, 30 degrees to the flat. They're all four points and as you can see the other side is not painted at all and that's why i do this because otherwise we would have we would probably be able to see white plastic so you come in there with your airbrush and you try and get underneath it and you end up with loads of paint and that's why i do this so if you are questioning it i know a lot of people just build a uh, fees and then paint them at the end 
um, that's fine. If that's how you want to do it, then carry on. It works. Uh, but I always worry about having, especially with this light grey plastic. Um, if it was dark green plastic and I was doing a, um, a Euro Camo one, then I wouldn't worry about it. But not with this light grey. Right, so I'll carry on and get all these off and then I'll get some glued on and we'll come back and see how they look. So there we go. And because they're not painted on that side, you can see them really, really well. So they're really, really tiny little parts, but they do add to the detail beautifully. Normally they would be just moulded on, wouldn't they, or something, but they are very, very nice indeed. And uh, of course, some manufacturers would make them out of bloody photo etch, and then they'd be flat and two-dimensional. But this, no, this kit's perfect. Right, so I hope I don't regret saying that. Moving on through the instructions, we have these two parts here, B19. There's two on each side. B19 is here. It's a little vertical upright. Um, it's in B19 on both sides. I guess that's 19 and that part was 20. OK, so uh, yeah, so there you can see the little uprights. And if I put them on, they're just going to get knocked off. Once the toolboxes are on, they'll be OK. So I think what we'll do, yeah, once the toolboxes are on, it'll kind of protect them a little bit. But uh, they're going to be very vulnerable if I put them on now, so I'm not going to put them on now. Um, so we can move on now. There's toolboxes, putting them all together. Exhaust, we've done all this. In fact, what I need to do is don't start crossing off things. We've got that um, barrel lock there, which I haven't uh, haven't taken off the sprue yet. And the fittings also. Now we can start looking at working on the fenders and building up these toolboxes and see what to assemble and not to assemble. Uh, with regard to um, masking and painting. Just looking through my brilliant book again. Thank you, Phil. And uh, I'm going to fit this because this piece here, C10, is going in here, which is behind that guard. And that's all white in there. That area in there is all white. This one here is the catch for the, for the um, hatch, which slides around. And that is in here, which is all grey. So I think we'll do this step. Uh, I'm not going to fit the hatch because that's brown, so we'll spray that separately and then put it in at the end. Um, I need to look into this piece that's going in here and see what that's all about. That's actually in the white area, so that's okay. And I also need to look at this um, armour on here. And if we get the book, we get to pages 26 and 27. I know you all want to see this because you love this book. Um, yeah, we can see that armour is there and that's all white and that's all white. All white, mate? So, um, yeah, we can fit them as well. So we can do all of this and get that cleared up. And then once we've done that, that means we've done all of this page. So I'll get the bits off and get those bits on. Right, so I've dropped a bollock here. More about that in a minute. Um, I've glued this piece on because um, this is where I dropped a bollock with it. I've got these ends to line up as good as I can. And then what we'll do, we'll go in with some Mr. Surfacer and sand them out. Um, in fact, I'll probably put some super glue in there. In fact, I'll put some super glue in there now. And that'll be easier to sand flat on the top and it won't shrink back and leave a, a mark. So we'll put some super glue on there and we'll put some on there. And then we can put Mr. Surfacer in the sides and move it the cotton bud. So we'll let that dry. Um, so yeah, if you look at the part here, you can see it has this lump on the set on the front. So I thought, oh, I'll, 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 that's a sprue nib, so I cut it off. <laughs> Then I realised I'd cut it off, so I filled the hole in with black super glue. And then when I looked at the drawing, the, the pictures, I could see in the dog having some fun outside, I could see in the pictures that there actually is a piece there. There is actually like a little block there. You can see it there. It's like a little block just sitting in front of it. So I've got a little piece of plastic strip just cut it off you can see it there as well you can see this little lump in the middle so um i got a little piece of plastic strip and glued it on the front just to make it like a lump and it's a little bit too tall so now that it's probably dry i can come along with a pair of cutters and just take the top of it off like so there we go that's better so uh so there we are. I'll put some Mr. Service over it to sort of blend it all in a bit. So yeah, be careful of that. I do this all the time actually. <laughs> I do this a few times on models. I cut bits off thinking they're sprue nibs and they're actually apart. So 
So be careful with the, the things like that. So um, this armor here, this can go on. So that one's going to go. Is it that way round? It must be. That one's going to go in there, like that. And this one is going to go in there. I'm assuming this is part of the steel blue armor. Someone that wants to set up on an angle. Okay. Whoops. I'm use the quick setting here to get a quick weld going on. Put that in there. Still trying to spring up. There's a hair on there I can see. Let's just get some cement in there and get that held down. That's cool. And then with the ordinary extra thin, I'm just gonna put a drop in there. Put a drop in there. And then again, we'll go on Mr. Surfacer and make sure there's no gaps there. So that's that one in. This part here, C7, is going to go in the outside here. And stick straight up like that, I believe. I believe that's how it's going to go. Unfortunately, it has an ejector pin in the side of it. So get your super glue out and get that filled in. So that's going to sit like that. So we get a... There we are. And then this little piece here, in fact, I'll leave that off until I've sanded that joint. I don't think that's dry yet, is it? No. Well, it might be. So what I'll do, I'll put a drop of the accelerator on it to get it going. In fact, I really want to get the um, put a drop of the accelerator on there. I really want to get the Mr. Surfacer on before I start fitting these little pieces because they're going to get in the way. So I'll get do the Mr. Surfacer first. What I'm going to do for now is just sand the top of this to get it level so it looks like one continuous piece. Yeah, there's that one. And then this one here. There we go. That's a much nicer job. Okay, so one other thing I want to show you. If you look here, you can see it because of the shadows from the paint. There is a mold seam there. It comes along here and it goes down there. Now none of this area down here really matters because I think it's hidden by toolboxes. But um, you can see it there and I've already gone over it but you can see it's still there. So what we're going to do is just scrape it away just to get rid of it. We'll do the same over here and as you notice what we're doing is we're losing the texture. We're losing the cast finish. So What we do is come along with some extra thin, paint it on, and then just push the brush up and down onto it, kind of blend it in with what's around it, and you'll end up with a cast texture. I'm not sure if you can see it or not. I'm just going to paint this over the top. Just like so. And there we are. You can see how we've got the textured finish on there if I can catch it in the light. Okay, it's very difficult for me to see because it's... There you go, we've got the textured finish, so that's good. So what we'll do now is we'll brush the Mr. Surfacer... Surfacer? Mr. Surfacer. 
we use the 1200 and we'll brush that all the way around there all on the inside and the outside and then we'll remove it with a cotton bud and that'll be that done right so and then while that's drying I'll take Jess for a walk so when I come back I will be walked along with Jess okay, so Jess has been walked and uh, we're back so I'm using Mr. Colour Lovely Thinners remember I think I showed you this in the last video didn't I or part three so I don't need to go into too much detail but remember Mr. Colour Lovely Thinners or you can use IPA isopropyl alcohol not Indian pale ale as was asked on by another watcher a little while back um, so we just rub away like that you can see we're rubbing away and it's not damaging any of the detail I'm not losing any of the casting marks I have seen other modelers I shall mention no names people who've done videos and they've said to use cellulose thinners well I would severely recommend against that because Cellulose thinners will dissolve plastic. So if you did this with cellulose thinners, you would probably ruin the surface of your model. So I wouldn't suggest that. So you just go around here like this. And just remove all the excess. Just like so. So I'll carry on. Get this done. I've just taken off that piece of plastic that I put on. <sighs> I'm such a numpty. I need to look more carefully at the instructions, don't I? Right. So there we go. That's the excess Mr. Surfacer removed, and we've got all the gaps filled. In fact, we haven't got the gap filled on the front of that one there, or have we? Yes, we have. Right, so I'll carry on and get this done around this armour, and then uh, I'll come back. And there we go, and I've glued those two little bits on. There's that little shield there. Not quite sure what that's for, and then there's a little, um, little greebly in there. Also glue those two parts on there, one there. And one there, they're little guards so when the track's loose it stops, stops the uh, track horns bashing into the forward roller there. So, um, right, so look at all this, now we can get on with these fenders. Looking at the real thing, let's get the book out again, you can see on here that the toolboxes are all painted with the various different stripes. You can see the other side, no that's the same side now, you idiot. Um, we can see a plan here. And we can see the toolboxes are all painted with stripes. Now I was kind of hoping that you'd be able to see green under them because obviously they wouldn't be able to get under them, but you can't. So I'm going to kind of leave them for now. Looking at that, those mould seams I've just taken out are going to be covered by these. Whatever. Um, so I'm going to build the toolboxes, but leave them off the fenders and see where we go. We can always like clamp it on and mask it up so that it all lines up. But what I don't want to do is have overspray in the joints. You can imagine if I tried to, if I mask this now with a piece of masking tape, and this is what I keep talking about with, with looking at the build sequence. If these two bits are on here, and I mask these now, okay, I put the masking tape down. I'm going to exaggerate this. If I don't push the masking tape into those corners, when I spray it, if this is grey and then I spray some black, I will get black fading under there so what I will end up with instead of having these two pieces here with a sharp line across them I'll have a kind of I have the, the paint running in into the gaps and that's what I want to avoid I want really solid sharp demarcations everywhere I don't want any soft edges so um and when you've got all the detail on it, it's very difficult to do the only reason I've put all this on here is because this whole back panel is painted brown so I'm going to build up these boxes, we'll get them off the sprues and clean them up. So we've got D5 and D12 going together there. I need to look at the masking to see whether I should add any of this detail here, or whether I should ask, just add the fenders first and then go for it. We've also got some photo etch there, which is the brackets that hold the, um, the rubber mud flaps on. Um, and that's a bit weird. They've, maybe they're moulded on on the outside. Where are the fenders? Yes. 
I was just looking at that because they've got a piece of photo which got on there and then they show it there on the other side. So on the inside they're actually moulded on, on the outside you fit the photo etch or vice versa. Yeah, on the outside it's moulded on, on the front and the back it's not. So that's good. Right, so I'll get these boxes off the sprues and we'll have a look at getting them together. All right, so I've got the toolbox parts off, all cleaned up and deburred, and they are lovely. Um, I haven't glued this panel together yet, have I? Uh, so we'll get those done. These, these are um, quite obviously just going to sit on here, so we can just see how they're going to go on. <clears throat> fit on there lovely like that okay so that's really nice and then we've got this this toolbox here is going to go on there or is it this one this one's going to go on there we've got these little tool mounting these little pieces in here you can see the little tool mounts they're actually part of the fender rather than part of the toolbox which is nice better way to do it um, that's all lovely. Coming in here, we have that. So we're going to have an outrigger on there. So this is going to go on top of the outrigger. And then that toolbox is going to go onto there. Now I'm not going to glue any of this on. I'm going to I'll assemble these boxes and then have them loose. Um, as you can see, I've got the fenders off. There's, there's the sprue nibs all the way around all around the outside so we've got taken care of that there's also some moulding marks on here which have removed um oh sorry they're here on the outside um but we're going to have the the sides on there now i'm thinking i'm probably going to have the sides on magnets have them removable so basically uh i'm going to fill these ejector pins holes in here yes i know what you're saying you're saying you're mad but hey the one thing we have got is time well we hope <laughs> Everybody's short of money at the moment. Everybody's bloody short of food. Everybody's short of heating, but we, uh, we've got time. So I'm going to fill them in and sand them back. So that's just something I'm going to do. But before that, we'll get these toolboxes together. So we've got this one here. Do, 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 do. What have we got? This one here. This one here is D5. And that's got that piece there going in there. So we can, I'll use the quick setting, so we can get that together, like a so, and then hopefully we won't need any filler or anything, we just sand that, yeah we are going to need some filler down the back, it looks like it's a bit of a gap at the back, but I'm just going to just push that in, as you can see it's sort of slightly sticking out, so There we go, and then this one is going to go on the other toolbox here. Sounds like somebody's vacuuming their something away. So this one is this one over here. So this is going to go on there. Oh, it goes like that. That's why I couldn't fit it. It goes on the side there. And then we've got another piece that goes in the front. So we've got this piece here going in the side. Drop a cement in there, there we go, and that will capillary around. So that's that there. It's cool. And then we got the piece across the front here, D47. I'm not going to put the fire extinguishers obviously because they're going to be painted. So we'll um I'll pause there for a second, I'll get D47 off and cleaned up and then we'll move on. So we've got a lot of parts off here. So I've got the fenders obviously cleaned up, I've got the toolboxes all built up. These um, outriggers that sit on the on the top of the fenders here, they're going to go in like, oops, they're going to go in something like that. That's, that's not the right one. That's going to go in like that. Okay, and then we'll have those in. And then um, that will be that. That is the right one. No, it's not. Wrong way round. I don't know, whatever. Um, so, yeah, that was the wrong way round. That's why that didn't go in. So that's going to go in there like that. And it's going to sit in between the toolboxes. There are a couple of ejector pin marks on these. 
that you could just leave because they sit between the toolboxes, but they're so shallow. Quick swipe with a 600 grit sanding stick and they're gone. So that's those two outriggers there. We've got these rear, um, these rear kind of guards that go on here, like that, and the toolbox is going to sit in there, I think, or something. And then we've got lights to go in and everything. We've got the cables moulded on, which is all very nice. I'm not going to fit any of this yet because I want to do the ejector pin marks. And if I hold it over and sand those out, I'm going to break all that off. Um, I've got the lights off, as you can see there. So what I'll do with them, I'll paint them silver first as a block, put them on. Then I'll paint what has to be painted red, in clear red. Then we'll mask them up and then we just paint everything black as in primer. The reason I paint them silver first is so the bright, the, the red shows up as a bright red light. One of the lights is silver, the others are all red. Um, and then finally, these mirrors. So you can see here, we've got a part, the parts numbers are uh, D31 and D32. And you can see in the instruction, you basically build up the mirror. So you've got the stem and then the actual mirror itself. In my book, I cannot find a single picture of a Berlin Camo Chieftain with mirrors, not one. So what I'm going to do with these, they all look as though they're sort of folded down. Um, I'll probably struggle to find a picture now. Let me find a picture and I'll come back. Here we go, guys. You can see there, there's the mirror. Oops. There's the mirror mount there, and you can see in front above my finger, you can see that rod just laying down. So they always just laid them down. So that's what I'm going to do with this. So I'm going to see if I can glue them in place and then twist them down. So we'll see how that comes out. When you look at them, this one has a bit of a funny moulding on the bottom. You can see there's like a big step in the moulding. So make sure that one goes on the right and then you can fold that side down. And all we'll do here, you've got these mountings here, they're part of the actual mirror itself. So we'll cut those off and then we can trim them up. Or I mean the other thing of course you could do, which I may well do actually, is just um, cut them off and use a piece of wire rather than have the plastic. In fact I think that's what I might do because it will be a lot stronger if it gets flipped hair flick. So there we go. So that's if you want to use the plastic parts you don't have any wire then there we are. They actually look a little bit thick. What sort of diameter are these? They are point, point six five. Well, 0.6 of 35 is like 20. So that means a 20 mil diameter. I don't think they'd be that big, would they? So I think we we'll use a piece of um, some 0.5 brass wire if I've got any. 0.5 is like 17 mil diameter in real life. That's probably more like it, isn't it? Plus, if you want to use the plastic parts, you can do that. So there we go. So I'll probably bend up some bits of brass instead of using them with all their mould seams and everything. So there we go. Um, so I've got a lot of work to do off camera. So I'm going to call that a day for this one. I'm going to get that barrel glued together. And then I'm going to do all these ejector pin marks in here. Paint these lights silver. Then I'll do the red. And then I'll come back when I've done that, I think. And then you can see what I do from there. But the trouble is, I, I want to sort of end this video now. Because basically we've been nearly an hour. And if I continue making this video, it's going to be another two or three days because I've got to paint the silver, let it dry, fill the ejector pin, let it dry, deal with the seams where these bits and pieces go on, let that dry. And then we've got to paint the clear red and then let that dry properly. And then we put some masking on there and then we'll paint over them in black. So I'll, I'll do all that and um, I'll, I'll get these up to the point where they're painted red and then I'll come back and we'll start part six then. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I know it's quite slow, but people do like to see everything. So you've always got the option of going fast forward. But if I just go cover it and like some people do a complete build in 15 minutes, you can't get much detail from that. And a lot of people, if you look at the comments, a lot of people love all the detail I go into. And we'll just have a quick look before I go. We'll just have a very quick look how that's going to look on the back of there. So that's going to slide now. that. There we go. You can see there's our back end looking all nicely detailed. So, uh, it's very nice indeed. So, did I, did I mention this is a lovely kit? I can't remember if I said that or not. Anyway, uh, I'll get all that done and then I'll see you for part six. 
Thank you for watching. Don't forget, get on over to Black Rifle Model Works. Have a look at the group build over on, on Facebook and, uh, and see some other builds. Um, I'm not actually putting any pictures up of this one because I'm sort of way in front. So I'll, so I'll start putting some up when I get a bit more. Perhaps when I've got the fenders done. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.